This is propaganda live. I only suggest how to think and how to vote. An extraordinary cultural moment, already iconic, already iconic. We love you, you're welcome here. Where did this guy come from? And it's like he's been doing it for ages, he's very confident. Plainly, and this is a matter now of fact and record, I'm right wing. I feel that Christ may have had a better vision. Is this misinformation or is Vivek Ramaswamy in the lavatory? That's a sort of like a poem. Is this Eminem? Man, we didn't come together in that stream. I'm assuming it was just the P. Now, these are the kind of conversations I think that the legacy media can no longer compete with. Win, 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 win. This is On Brand, a podcast where we discuss the ideas and antics of one, Russell Brand. I'm Al Worth, and each week I go through an episode of Brand Show with my co-host, Lauren B. That's me, I'm Lauren B, and I have no idea what we'll be getting in today, but it's usually pretty bad. It's almost invariably bad, which is why we do the good thing before the bad thing. Lauren, what is your good thing before the bad thing this week? I'm wearing it right now. Oh. For those oh. of you that can't, that are listening only and cannot see the vidya, uh, I got some. So actually, Mike and I were gifted some handmade, gorgeous, like really beautifully knitted. Like, oh, wow. Lord, tried this, can't do it. Uh, from Moniker, our uh, our mod over on um, on Reddit, and it, stun. Stunning, gorgeous. Wow. Look amazing. I even I, I I switched up my uh my headphones today so that I could I I could wear them. And I um <laughs> I I know that I think one was supposed to be for me, one was supposed to be for Mike as far as like the color scheme goes. And mm. I'm glad we share. I like them both. <laughs> I like them both a lot. Uh, and so, yeah, it was just like really, really cool and really wonderful and so kind. She wrote the note that was really wonderful. And so, Aww. yeah, uh, really, really great and sweet and lovely and wonderful. Um, and our listeners are fantastic. And, it's, you know, especially this one in particular. No arguments Shout here. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much, right? Monica. And, and 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 I know she has asked for my address as well. So I mean if if I mean th those look incredible as well. That's I, that's, that's truly, really truly. I love this color. Gesture. I love it. I like well, I like both. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. The look purple amazing. one's sparkly. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's harvest oh. colors. We've got harvest colors for the listeners. We've got like a harvest uh -huh. color melange, uh stripey melange with different like knit like it's 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 impressive on like a skill level yeah, um and i know gorgeous. i'm sure that they're blushing right now suck it up fuzzball you're getting complimented so uh yeah and then we oh. got a little sparkle in the purple yeah oh, i love the purple that's that's lovely yeah wow isn't it nice wow so what's your so good thing nice my good thing is um well I, I i mentioned to you before that you know i've had a bit of a cold this last week so i've been trying to do a little bit of resting um you know and it's it just hit me like a fucking freight train at the end of last week i'm like oh great um but one thing i have been enjoying while i've been resting is the new fallout tv show on amazon um, oh, i've heard of that i heard about yeah those. yeah it's it's gotten a lot of critical acclaim and with good reason it's fantastic and it helps the, the the fallout um games is one of my favorite game series um it's, it's post apocalyptia um but also very kind of uh very satirical and so there's a, there's a lot of darkness and bleak stuff but it's also very funny um and very kind of politically pointed and that kind of thing as well um and yeah they just absolutely nailed it from top to bottom in that show i'm so happy that's um, rad yeah, yeah, it's great, nice. especially as like, you know, video game shows and movies historically don't do, you know, they're not great. That's that's usually what happens. Um, We've come a long way from Spawn, I think. Yes, from from Sp and Street Fighter, um, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, Though uh, though Ra Raul Julia as as M Bison was fantastic, oh, so, yeah, but that queen. was the that was the queen. that was the only good thing about that movie. I think it's fair to say. Oh, I feel um, like the internet has long since agreed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I'm 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 so pleased. Um, and that's the the second, you know, because I, I the Last of Us TV show. That's another one of my favorite game series that is also posted. The bar is high. That one. Yeah. The bar is yeah. high, and I'm here for that. I'm here yes, for it. 
absolutely nailed it. I'm I'm so uh, so thrilled. Thanks. Everyone should go and watch it. It's really good fun. Now, we have got a show to do, and normally we'd thank some new patrons here, but in fact there are no new patrons this week, so instead I would like to invite all our listeners, especially if you like our show, to please, please go and leave us a five-star review right this second on whatever platform you're listening to us on. I have mentioned before that because we name the bad people in the titles of the episodes, they often get thrown algorithmically at the exact opposite audience to who we want to be listening to our show, and those people tend to be pretty active when they don't like something. Um, Consequently, we've had some reviews panning the show lately, particularly after Charlie Kirk and after Russell and the Great Replacement Theory. Those were two spikes, which is very interesting. Um, you know, yeah. To, to, to combat what I yep. can only assume is probably the white nationalists coming out of the woodwork, um, please do leave us a five-star review wherever you can. It's very helpful to the show. Um, I am considering, instead of naming people like with their actual name, just using anagrams of their names in future, um, which could be both fun for me and a good little puzzle for the audience before we get into the reveal. Um, okay. You know, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say no. <laughs> we well, could just say out. the hit date. Me <laughs> hit me out. Tucker we Carlson, could just instance. see the... Could... Okay. All right. Okay. So Tucker Carlson could be Acorn Truckles, or or uh, or Cro Cronus Tackler, or my personal favorite Carl Cokernuts, uh, <laughs> which I love. I spent a good ten Gr minutes giggling uh, at yep. that name. Yeah, uh, I bet you. I bet you did, girl. I bet you did. Um, yeah. Well, so at least then no one. And so instead, the, the algorithm will find no one instead of just yes. people that are going to be upset with us. I mean, mm. I feel like the feedback that is really particularly uh enthusiastic it's mm -hmm. kind of obvious that's like oh you didn't listen to it okay yeah yeah okay yeah. pretty pretty much <laughs> um but yeah i i i either so way, many internally... valid criticisms to choose from <laughs> yeah, right. and i'd love um, to hear the counterpoint it's a thoughtfully mm. considered counterpoint mm -hmm. oh, but i'm not gonna um that. Yeah. No, uh, but yeah, internally from now on, I may still be referring to Tucker Carlson as Carl Cokernuts. Okay. Um, <laughs> but okay. that's just for me. That's, sure. that's for me. Sure. Uh, Anyway, if anyone wants to support us in what we do, become an Awakening Wonder, join the Invisible Hand, or donate on an elevated tier, head to patreon.com slash onbrand, and you will have our eternal gratitude. It is this which allows us to be editorially independent and ad-free. As a patron, you will also get a shout-out on the show and access to our patron-only show, Off Brand, where we discuss anything but Russell Brand. And this week, we discussed a little bit more of Bannon and Farage, um, while also getting into Christian nationalism and the differences in political maneuvering between the US and the UK. Well, and relevant ver to the to the current. Uh, yes, yeah, it's cur re relevant to what is going on right now. Unfortunately, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, var the variables are different between the countries, um, so it is interesting. Um, so head to patreon.com slash onbrand to check that out. It was a fun, fun and, well, slightly bleak conversation, but mostly fun. Um, and please note that while you can easily listen to our audio version anywhere you can find podcasts, you can also watch us on YouTube, or if you're listening to the Spotify app, the video should come up there too. Now then, last week, Russell put out a second interview that he had done. Um, and it is with someone requiring our attention for a number of reasons. Um, I will let Russell introduce them, and normally I would cut the introduction clip fairly short, but in this case I'm gonna let the full thing play because we need something of a reminder of just how bamboozling the opening of this man's show can be. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining me today for Stay Free with Russell Brand with Surgeon General of Florida, Dr. Joseph Ladapo, you are going to love this conversation because it's going to arm you with sweet, sweet freedom and help you understand what a good public official looks like versus a bad one. Let me know in the chat who you think a bad one is. We want you with us as much as possible and as quickly as possible to facilitate that. Download the Rumble app, click the red button, become an awakened wonder. You get additional videos every single week on subjects like chemtrails. You could have joined us for this conversation with Dr. Ladapo. 
and plus you will be part of a powerful movement. Now, Dr. Joseph Ladapo, author of Transcend Fear, was the and is the Surgeon General of Florida. His book, Transcend Fear, describes his views on public health restrictions, early home treatment and COVID-19 vaccines, along with how Florida officials made public health decisions that set Florida apart from other states. But did they go far enough? And was it successful? We spoke about a variety of subjects and you are going to love hearing about them. You would have seen it a week earlier if you were an Awaken Wonder on Locals. If you're watching us on YouTube, you're going to be here with us for about 15 minutes and you've got to suck upon them words as if it were the sweet titty milk of a wolf and you were Romulus or maybe Remus. As you know, only one twin can survive. Okay. Now, get ready for the conversation with Dr. Ladapo, who shows you what a public official should look like. Honest, authentic, open-minded, exciting and illuminating. Remember, YouTube will only be with you for a minute. Why? Because we live in the sweet stream of freedom. So you'll have to click the link eventually. Here's the conversation. Wow. <laughs> Tight reference for like what a dumb guy thinks a smart guy sounds like. <laughs> right. Oh dear, yeah. We 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 all know this guy is a lot, but I do think sometimes a reminder is helpful. <laughs> um anyway, Dr. Dr. Joseph Ladapo, Surgeon General of Florida, is on the show. My guess is you might have an awareness of this guy already somewhere. I can't place name to crisis. I, okay. I okay. don't have a, I don't have a good uh, background on this one. Yeah. Let's okay. Cool. Hey, that's that's fun. Okay. So uh, Joseph Ladipo has <laughs> uh, fun for me. Um, jo Joseph Ladipo has in many ways been the right hand man of Ron DeSantis since 2021, um, affirming the anti-vax, anti-lockdown, and anti-trans ideologies using pseudoscience and quackery. Um, he also doesn't like gay people. Um, on sexual orientation, he said, quote, I personally think those are moral issues and there's only one position on those, unquote. So, great. Okay, uh, wait. No, yeah, it's ringing some bells. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm, All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, now, here's how he got the job of Surgeon General. Um, so, so the last guy, uh, before Ladipo, in, in, um, in a press conference stated that prolonged mitigation measures against COVID-19 would be needed. He was then immediately removed from yeah. the press conference in which he said it. And, and let me guess, on, this guy won, hmm. uh, like a drive time radio contest. Is that... Might as well have been. <laughs> Might as well have been. The, yeah. the, the last guy, the, the contract was not renewed, um, shall we say. So DeSantis needed someone who agreed with his views. Uh -huh. Ladapo had been writing a bunch of op-eds for the Wall Street Journal promoting anti-vax, anti-mask, isn't ivermectin great sorts of arguments from his tenured position at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Um, that then caught the notice of Ron DeSantis, and they hired Ladapo to move over with his family from California to become the Surgeon General of Florida. Um, interestingly... You William Barda. Has... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. right. Mm -hmm. He also has a position at the University of Florida, um, which has caused some controversy because he's collecting a salary from both jobs and doesn't appear to be doing almost any of the work he was hired to do at the <laughs> University of Florida. What isn't <laughs> money laundering? What isn't money laundering? <laughs> Mm -hmm. In fact, Point me to his... an industry that isn't money laundering now. Again, yep. I'm not going to hold my breath. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, within his first year of working there, he reported having been to the campus twice. Uh, not, not bad for a $262,000 salary. Um, yeah. Yeah, which when combined with the Surgeon General salary puts him on a cool half million a year. Um, you know. For... Okay, and I know this is unrelated, but anyone that's mm. in the in the it's mm, it is related though. Oh my god! Mm. Because I feel like okay, we did have a lot of these conversations kind of over the weekend because my cat and art show uh, that was up and uh, at a university in Michigan, um, and so and it was great and it was cool and everybody was awesome. The power went out due to wind damage, which was huh. something. Um, but also. <laughs> The challenges, and I brought this up, I think it was an off-brand, but like the challenges that are facing the like educators that mm. do a job and the the quote unquote, you know, like the 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 crisis of like not being able to pay people. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that you can't compensate and then tenure at like professors and like a tenure is not even protecting professors anymore. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Like, yeah, and and the, there's also he, oh. he was supposed to he was supposed to bring with him six hundred thousand dollars worth of funding from the NIH for a study he was supposed to be doing, and that hasn't materialized either, which is causing controversy. In fact, he's he's directly responsible for a study where he's the sole person with six hundred thousand dollars, and then there's another one where he's one of three people with another six hundred thousand um, dollars. And yeah, he was. So uh, are we, okay. So we're also uh, implicating fucking foundations <clears throat> here. I didn't know mm -hmm. that a person could do that. I thought you had to be a company to promise a bunch of bullshit and get a bunch of tax breaks and concessions from like a city and then not deliver. I didn't know one Apparently, human could do that. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. Apparently he can. And when, huh. when he was quizzed by leadership at the University of Florida, he said, well, I've edited a couple of studies and I've been finishing my book. So I go, like, oh, great. <laughs> That's wow. that's your defense, is it? Okay. Um, what now, is it yeah. like to be able to be so bad at your job and still get paid? What is that even know. about? Yeah, that's I've amazing. never been able to conceptualize that personally. You know, my, well, one of the, I don't know, I, I feel like you're the same as me in this regard, but I always had it instilled to me that, that whatever I'm doing, I should try and do a good job, you know? That's, well, that's... it's beyond being instilled. I don't have a choice. I make you're stuff and then sell well. it. And if it yes, sucks, yeah, right. no one buys it. And it can mm -hmm. suck for a lot of reasons that I kind of have to guess at and like take a mm. lot of critique on board, uh, mm. like a massive amount. I don't get a choice. I have to do what like uh, that's what the people want. And it yeah, has to be sure, good sure. or I won't get paid. Like I, yeah, I, <laughs> and, and it's I'm, very I'm sure direct. When, I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure um, when when you were tattooing, it had to be good, good as well, because that has a whole other ream of consequences. You know, that's yeah, on uh, someone for life. Oh yeah, like all, yeah, healthy, and also you can see me doing it. Uh, unless, yeah. it, I mean, it's right there. I don't yeah. get to, you know. Oh boy, oh boy, yeah. oh boy. Yeah, a lot of Poe doesn't have any of these concerns. <laughs> Uh, now, yeah, as mentioned, uh, Ladipo has written a book, um, and it's, it's called uh, Transcend Fear, A Blueprint for Mindful Leadership in Public Health. Um, to give you an indication, it's got a foreword by RFK Jr. and an afterword by Gavin DeBecker, um, because Ladipo felt it necessary to bookend the thing with bullshit, apparently. Um, I have read it cover to cover, and um, I've got to say, as a sort of half memoir, half anti medicine screed, it's not badly written. Um, if Ladipo wrote it himself, which might be optimistic, um, the prose is not bad. Unfortunately, everything else about it is terrible, um, even down to the cover, which just features an image of blue water and some bold word art style text over the top. That sounds like a book cover. Uh, oh, come on. Okay. Like, it's a book cover. <laughs> There's a lot of ugly book uh, covers uh, out here. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like, man, these people just should pay an artist, for God's sake. Um, mostly, it uh, it tells the story of how Ladipo came to be an anti-vaxxer, um, and he doesn't have anything particularly original to say on that topic. Uh, his references are full of quackery and nonsense, disproven or retracted studies, um, and treaties on the rights of the individual that he holds so uh, so sacred. Um, in fact, L Ladipo isn't exactly known for his honesty on the issue of vaccines. Um, in April 2023, Politico reported on the fact that Ladipo edited a state-funded study on the risks of the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, the altered study reports that the uh, mRNA vaccination may be driving the increased risk in males, um, especially among males aged th 18, <coughs> 18 to 39, and that the risk associated with mRNA vaccination should be weighed against the risk associated with COVID-19 infection. Um, What's and, the risk, uh, the, though? Well, the risk is what? The risk of, I just said, increase the risk to that age group. The risk of what? Yeah, the um, the, the the risks of... Um, of uh, dangers to your health and to um, and to contracting COVID nineteen as well, um, uh, which which is uh, oh, uh, 
Okay. We'll, we'll get into that point a little bit later. Um, latter post statements do stand in contrast to guidance from the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, and because his assertions were so out of line with scientific consensus, many prominent researchers criticized his changes. Um, so, for instance, uh, Daniel Salmon, the director of the Institute for Vaccine Safety at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, noted that Ladapo quote, took out stuff that didn't support his position, unquote, a move he called troubling. Hard agree, yes, that is troubling. <laughs> that is that is a troubling thing to be doing for a public official. Um, okay. A so. researcher. A re yeah. Yes. If you do yes, research yes. wrong, mm -hmm. Dwight, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be paid by, like, you shouldn't be paid buckets and buckets of money oh to also yep. not do that job wow okay yeah so Jeez. let's get into the interview and it opens with a bramble of a question from russell welcome to the show dr ladipo thank you so much for joining us today thanks for inviting me russell it's lovely to meet you uh, directly, if not in person, because during the pandemic period, I remember feeling, as I'm sure many people did, that yours was a sane and trustworthy voice during a period where people were losing a great deal of faith in public officials. We spend a lot of time on this channel talking about Dr. Anthony Fauci as the epitome of this phenomena, someone that was heralded and held up as the face of the reliable bureaucracies of America. But over time has come to be seen as a figure of, uh, and again, I'll be careful here because we're still for the first 15 minutes streaming on multiple platforms, including YouTube, where we face <laughs> considerable censorship, has been uh, come to be seen as someone whose involvement historically in complex research, the way that he's received royalties, a potential direct involvement in the Wuhan Institute of, Vi of Virology and their projects um, have all meant that the trust in him as an individual and public health more broadly has waned significantly. You've written a new book, Transcend Fear, a blueprint for mindful leadership in public health. Would it be fair to say that, um, that you might be a new epitome for public health in America and that Dr. Anthony Fauci has taught us many lessons? If that analysis is true, could you tell us what the lessons we could learn from the figure of Anthony Fauci? Jeez. Yeah, where do you start, Russell? I agree with everything you said. Uh, I mean, I, maybe lesson number one is to really examine the deliverer of your information. Now that is a sentiment I agree with, if only he meant it honestly. Um, for instance, if I examine the two deliverers of information on this here show we're dissecting, we have two people who lie for money, uh, one of which who spouts bigotries against trans and gay people, and the other is a credibly accused sex offender. Now, I don't know about you, Lauren, but to me that sounds like maybe not the best place to be getting your information from, you know? I wish that was a less rare, uh... <laughs> formula <laughs> yes. uh, behind yeah, the scenes yeah. to yeah yeah mm. i'm almost like wait do we have something art uh, i don't know <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> wow right great cool this is gonna yeah. be something yeah. okay Oh, okay. the, it, yeah. Um, the, the the stuff about Fauci is all stuff we've already debunked on the show, yeah. and it's it's a bunch of nonsense. Only this time, coupled with the concept that maybe Ladapo here is the anti-Fauci, the new epitome for public health in America, as Russell puts it. And I'm sure that's something not to be concerned about at all. <laughs> Do we need that? Uh, Do we need one uh, person? Like, that's not... What? Okay. Jesus. Apparently. Christ. We're really um, we're really out on a limb already tight. Okay. Sick. Let's let's party. Let's do it. Okay. And d any guesses as to where Ladipo might land on the subject of Anthony Fauci? Uh hates him, wants him strung up in the town square, like reasonable things to think. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's 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 find out. You know, I think a lot of people early on just completely were snowed by Dr. Fauci, but there were a few voices that could see him for who he is. And who he is, is a dishonest, self-serving political animal who happens to have scientific <laughs> political training. animal. And 
we saw him, he misled people in so many ways. I mean, the, the whole mask thing was just epic. You know, I still, he was sitting in that 60 minutes interview saying, no one really needs to wear one, which actually was consistent with the there science because no, the science hasn't it wasn't. been supportive. And then oh. he flipped the script and, and we were up to maybe two or three masks, I think by the time the pandemic was was actually starting to cool down. So, you know, you got to look at the, the sources of information and really feel whether they resonate with you in terms of your connection with uh, with what feels true. Uh, oh, clearly, you know, yeah, I don't have anything <laughs> against him actually, but but you can look at him. He's obviously a very dishonest, untrustworthy person. Does it feel true? That's what you need to be asking. Does it feel true? Um, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Mm. Uh, for those of you listening and you can't see that. Um, Dr. Ladipo is a is a black man. Mm. And I would think, I would hope that saying that someone just looks untrustworthy on their appearance, mm. maybe think like have a little just give give would that give you pause to say? It would give me pause <laughs> to say. And yeah, I hate to speak but- out of turn. That's just, I'm a little, there's a lot in that se- that statement. Like, the, he said a lot. But, like, that's a whole, yeah. bud, what are we yeah, doing? And I, I, um, I, uh, I would say the distinction there is that you are a pretty responsible communicator. And, um... <sighs> Ladipo I try doesn't seem to so hard seem to have that. <laughs> yeah, like every yeah. sentence that comes out of my fucking mouth. That's not hyperbole. I know. I, oh my god. I I know that I can I can be dramatic. <gasps> okay. All right. Yeah. There's a lot, yeah. and I know we're gonna get into it because again, yeah. he said a thing that was true. It's like, oh yeah, that whole mask thing, and Anthony Fauci saying like the CDC design deciding to lie. Well, let, let me we let me get into still that. So. so dealing with the repercussions of that which is fucking like it's it's i'm it's okay yep yeah let's get into yeah. it yeah so so firstly ladipo is not a fan of old fauci how strange an opinion in this media sphere um so obviously no one has ever suggested wearing two or three masks that's never been the advice and that should yeah, be a necessity yes it was yeah. here where to where? double up I on masks i could not find that i could not Ow. find that no. Wow. Where? Out every yeah, because people were just wearing fabric masks or they weren't using like they were um <laughs> the masks that we had weren't doing the trick because like there's so like the the um the basically the fabric for lack of a better word, the the membrane, right? Like because the covid is so small. Like that was part of why they're saying that they don't work. Yeah, we okay. that's something that we um that uh, yeah, that was yeah, that especially like during the protest and everything, like people saying like hey, you should mask up responsibly. Um yeah, because yeah, also yeah. people were just like because we also didn't have access because the, the the production issues, the reason that they lied. Yeah. Because there weren't enough things, there wasn't enough PPE. Um so doubling up, it's like it, so we're we're talking about during COVID, the Swiss cheese model of trying a bunch of like putting a bunch of barriers in place to make one whole barrier for COVID, you know, like social distancing yeah, yeah, yeah. and masks and, and vaccines and all the and, you know, like HEPA filters and air quality. That's the Swiss cheese. But then also the actual physical Swiss cheese of like, well, one mask is not doing it. So two mm. might give you a better shot especially if you're like layering a fabric on top that might fit better over like one of those crappy kind of like handout for free now at a, at a store like surgical masks so it's at least giving people a shot yeah that was everywhere here interesting okay so so there are two things that are interesting about that one is that i couldn't find that information <laughs> and two is that that was not a thing that happened over here at all yeah. um so that there, there's a cultural difference there as well um and and one would wonder maybe maybe people were masking up more responsibly here or maybe just the advice was worse here there's there's there were I more think consequences. Both are very possible there were yeah. actual like consequences to breaking the rules there yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legal consequences and yeah. fines and that kind of thing. Yeah, enforceable um, consequences. So, and that was not so, yeah. the case. I mean, it was certainly so like, yeah. <laughs> okay. It depends on who you ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. like. Okay. Thing. As for as for the sixty minutes interview, um, so it's a little old hat at this point, but the interview is from March eighth, twenty twenty, um, when we didn't have a clue what we were dealing with, um, and COVID because COVID nineteen was only declared a pandemic by the WHO on March eleventh, mm -hmm. um, so this is three days before that had even occurred, and then Trump declared it a national emergency on March thirteenth, and stay at home orders started on March nineteenth with California leading the charge and guidance on the issue of wearing a mask changed in early April 2020 when it became clear that hey this this is probably effective um so so yeah I I, I don't think it's necessarily fair to hold to this this uh, this interview to the standard um, of knowing of having all the information when they very clearly didn't um so yeah I mean the messaging yeah. that's the thing is is I just I'm I'll I was making masks like I was sewing masks at the time mm -hmm. because I mm -hmm. have the ability to sew stuff. Um, and I've also, you know, just because of, I mean, tattooing, you kind of have to learn like that just cause you can't see germs doesn't mean they're not there. That's part of like maintaining yeah. your professional license is bloodborne pathogen training. And no, it's not fucking rocket science. And even when yeah. I was looking at like, I, I, you know, Mike and I can figure a thing out. And he was still mm -hmm. like, it was a lockdown order. So he was home. So we're both like Googling like crazy. Like, why are they saying masks don't work? This is crazy. What the, and also mm -hmm. getting like, <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was getting, I was getting it from all sides. And I'm like, okay, a bunch of this stuff doesn't make sense, but I'm also not trying to think I know more than the CDC. And then it turns out that that's, they weren't just lying. Ah. And it, and they're yeah, like, we weren't yeah. lying. It was a, it was a, pre, it was a premature fib. Like, no, no, no. Just say that you fucked up and then you everyone was... <laughs> that is confused will at least know like, oh, okay, you fucked up and now, but like, they're still going to make, it's, it's like, um, like Joe Biden having to like, uh, you know, couch his kind of like statements or actions for the sake of like not alienating Republicans. They're already calling you a socialist. Like they're going to yeah. say it anyway. You might as well just yeah. do the right thing. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, the, Fauci. It was such shit, a you know, shitty it was, time. It was, it was ir time. irresponsible. It was irresponsible what he said, and he should have just come out and been like, "Yeah, fucked up, everybody. Sorry, happens. You know, that was irresponsible of me. I'll do better. You know, like because the run on PP happened uh, anyway. Also, like that. Yeah. it's it didn't. It also didn't prevent the thing they were trying to avoid. It just mm -hmm. made this. What yeah. a terrible idea. What a fucking terrible. Okay. Obviously, I'm yeah. upset because I, I like lived in it. I'm like on mutual aid groups trying to figure out which mask like. Uh, oh, my God. It, it was yeah. a really yeah. fucking R rightly, shitty time. Rightly so. Yeah. You are you are correct to be upset about the issue. Um, So from here, Russell has a question about people using their own judgment to appraise public health messaging. It sounds good. What you said there about trusting your own instincts and intuition when it comes to uh, um, appraising, personally appraising public information. That in itself has become quite controversial in your country. It seems that we are more and more inclined towards, why. certainly in terms of legislation, legitimizing the state as a kind of uber parent to us all, determining which information we should even have access to. There seems to be some fear and loathing of ordinary Americans. Beyond the fear and loathing, I might offer a kind of contempt, a sense Is that in Las Vegas? we, and I mean the people of the world here, because I'm plainly not American, are not capable of ourselves looking at some data on, for example, uh, vitamin D, or other proposed measures, and of course we're going to get into discussing the vaccine later, You're and making capable. a choice for our family. There was an appetite for authoritarianism. There was an appetite for mandate. Sometimes mandate was executed, blessedly, not as much as I get the sense the state would have liked to have mandated it. So this idea that we are actually 
as individuals, as communities and as families able to, for ourselves as sovereign, determine what our medical and indeed cultural choices are to be seems to be something that's under threat. Does that seem like a, a fair assessment to you, Doctor? Oh, it's more than fair. I mean, it's fact. And you're absolutely right. I know that's something, a theme that you've talked about. And I'm really appreciative of you talking about it because there are, I think there are a lot of people out there who they can sense that there's something wrong, but they're not sure, you know, what exactly is wrong. And when you hear a voice like yours that is laying it out very clearly, because no doubt, absolutely bet your life, that's what we're up against, right? It's literally, it's the individual it's the individual sovereignty. It's the individual and the power of the individual with his or her relationship with God and the universe and everything that is out there that makes us special and perfect <laughs> versus what? the, you know, these, these, these people and these forces that want to uphold institutions above the individual. I mean, the individual means really almost nothing to them. The, the individual is a means to an end. The institution and their conception of what the world should be and ought to be is all that matters to them. So that's there's that is absolutely positively what we're up against. Wow. He said it out loud. He said the thing. It's like people that don't know but have an inkling that something's wrong and you are ready with definitive information. Mm -hmm. Great job. Mm -hmm. Sit grift. Game respects game. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. and as 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 Sir Russell's saying, you know, all oh, that they think we're not equipped to, you know, look at a study on vitamin D or whatever. It's because you're not. You're not. It's been proven that you're not. It's been like even just with a Google search, I I I, I can't remember the exact figure, but this came up on a recent serious inquiries only um, episode where where there, there was a study showing that like seventy percent of people who use Google to find out information end up just searching for things that will confirm their own biases rather than actually finding out the truth so i'm like well if i can't trust you to use google do you think i do you think you are trustworthy enough to be able to to understand very complicated difficult science i don't understand most of it it's very complicated yeah, yeah. and to remember that and we cannot forget that google is an ad selling machine that's what it's intended to do that is how Absolutely. they're like, we're going to support ourselves by selling ads. And this we're at this extreme point where clickbait and uh, yeah, just clickbait and salacious news and the do your we're at this like <laughs> high peak of do your own research. So not yeah. only is it difficult for the person that isn't ne doesn't necessarily have the tools to research in a way that is not biased, because it isn't very often an unconscious bias, that like not only that, the machine is meant to s be satisfying. That's what the mm -hmm. machine is meant to do, is to satisfy you with information. Yep. Absolutely. And and then when you're being told what to Google by the likes of RFK Jr., for instance, who specific tells you specific keywords. phrases that lead back to his own website, I'm like, well, yeah, of course, that's what's going to happen. Oh, my SEO Lord. SEO champion. Like a yep. grand champion SEO. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so to the broader point. Individual sovereignty is perfectly fine. It's by and large a positive thing, right? The freedom to make our own decisions, to lead our own lives. It's a wonderful thing up until the point where your individual sovereignty and choices infringe upon someone else's individual sovereignty. So as a for instance, right, you get COVID-19. Um, so you, you, you catch it. It's not too bad for you personally. Maybe a bit of a cough. You're one of the lucky ones. So you go about your business. You go to work, get your groceries, see your friends, all the stuff you'd usually do. And you don't wear a mask because you don't want to and it's your right not to and then you happen to cough near someone indoors perhaps that someone is maybe immunocompromised and can't get a vaccine they can't be vaccinated that someone then gets COVID-19 from you from that little itty bitty cough you just did and then it kills them that is how that works mm. what he's describing isn't us lot being authoritarians and demanding sovereignty <laughs> You know, it doesn't them have forever. to just yeah, be exactly. killing them. Like, it, it nope, could be nope, a could, million long problems. Long COVID, there's so many yeah. issues. Um, 
Yeah, Honestly, I feel like it, it, focusing on the death rates is like, yeah, it's also really bad, but it almost makes it yeah. less personal, you know? Like, and I, I think that we're dealing with this situation that's like, yeah, over a million. I can't even conceive of that. And and so it's so hard to like make it tangible. But like, yeah, people in your community have been permanently disabled because of a lack of oxygen through their breathing parts, like, uh, can, yeah, you know, yeah, over yeah. a long period, like enough damage keeps you from getting what you need for your like brain and body to function properly and then it's permanently damaged yeah, ah! yeah there, 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 are, there can be drastic health effects just from having gotten it you know even if you survive right um but but no yeah. nonetheless you know him him saying that uh, Ladipo is saying you know that oh we're all authoritarians um and, and demanding sovereignty of the institution over individual sovereignty that's not the case it's we're putting the right for everyone not to die or be seriously ill over individual sovereignty right i believe that that immunocompromised person in that example deserves to live and have as healthy a life as as we do and and so i am vaccinated i wear a mask where applicable and i am considerate of the welfare of other human beings and it's not virtue signaling it's not propaganda it's basic human fucking decency and i say this you know what well, i haven't checked the stats in a while but as you mentioned the death toll from covid19 in the united states sits at over 1.1 million people <laughs> Ninety-five thousand of those are from florida alone the place that this man presides over as the public health official in charge that's yeah. heading towards 10 yeah. percent yeah. of all covid deaths in the u.s from this man's state but oh Which... no let's pay tribute to the individual sovereignty of the right. floridians or those who are left well population density all that blah Blah, blah, blah. like yeah no yeah. it's really bad and um yeah russell saying earlier is like how did it go in florida and then like leaving it up is like a we don't know yeah we do we do when mm -hmm. there's numbers that i know you're not mm -hmm. gonna cite russell i know you're not yep. gonna actually deal with the reality okay great no, no. Well, he, he can't because it disproves all of the points. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, from here, Russell asked a, uh, he asked a brambling question about how uh, people from the left are now uh, authoritarian and now the right wing are all about freedom. And, and we're going to skip to Ladipo's uh, answer on the issue. So not that many years ago, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago or so, you had this movement in the United States, this Occupy Wall Street movement. And at that time, and actually for many years before that, you had people who were more liberal, who just naturally were less trustful of government, less trustful of, of companies, less trustful of corporations, and with very good reason, you know? And over time, these same people in, in that camp, they've completely flipped. Now they are, you know, they, you know, listen to the authorities, listen to the health officials, you know, the you know, Facebook and, and these corporations are on our side and, and they should be having more power to restrict speech and things like that. They're saying, and, you know, and now Ooh, you've got really reach. people who are, were, are now considered conservative. They're the people who are less trustful of government. They're the people who are less trustful of corporations and they're the people who will want more speech. So you're absolutely right. Something has happened. It, it's almost like a hypnotic effect something like like trance almost in terms of oh, moving okay. people to one side and then moving those same people to the other side and it's 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 uh, it's not obviously it's not pretty to watch because it it leads to very bad outcomes as we saw during the pandemic and in many other ways okay so <laughs> I, I wanted to deal with this because this isn't the first time I've heard this stupid argument. And actually, Steve Bannon brought it up in his interview as well. Um, and, and it didn't feel necessary to deal with it then. But as it's come up again, um, Occupy Wall Street was not that long ago. Kicked off at the tail end of 2011. I remember it pretty vividly, as I'm sure do you. Um, according to Ladipo here, all of those Occupy Wall Street people are now completely reversed on their position. They love the big corporations. They love the 1%. Um, except, no, of course they don't, because that's fucking insane, as is the idea of an entire movement of people simultaneously shifting their entire ideology over the span of a decade. Um, it's, I mean, you know, yeah, there's like a, there's a cadre <clears throat> of like, of reactionary like there's listen they're reactionaries on the left like or sure, definitely like sure. liberal reactionaries so like a pack of freaks on twitter does not the left make and also he's not mm -hmm. even really 
saying the le- like uh, qualifying these people as Occupy Wall Street, like people that are part of Occupy Wall Street, is mm. it's a different code. You know what I mean? And like, mm, so you don't have to just say the left. He's yes. being yeah, more yeah. specific when possible, which mm-hmm. is an interesting trick. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, firstly, saying Wall Street is corrupt is not the same thing as saying, ah, yes, you shouldn't listen to public health officials. If that sounds obvious, it's because it is. Those are yeah. two profoundly different things. Um, <laughs> no yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, no. yeah, um, yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And I can, I can all but guarantee you that the, the left wing Occupy Wall Street types are almost all still very much against the big corporations, corporate greed, and the ever widening wealth gap between you and me, Lauren, and these two incredibly wealthy men on screen um oh right all the money oh yeah all the money yeah all that i I can't Uh, forget to be mad about the money about all the money mm -hmm. took from people that actually need it yes 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 yes, yes. yeah 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 uh nobody is saying that facebook and social media sites are on our side but people like me are saying that yes ladipo and russell you are both full of shit and should not be allowed a platform in these places if you're going to actively knowingly lie for profit so to that specific end i personally support the social media companies in every single other possible way i loathe them entirely and the product and world they've created um, and that, yeah, that, that was just made generally... up. That was just completely yeah. fake. The thing is, I was like completely. I mean, I, they were all kind of. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good analysis because a lot of it was spurious. But yeah, yeah. Um, and as for the concept of conservatives nowadays being against the big corporations, um, okay, sure thing, buddy. Uh, <laughs> like the calls just from we, inside we, the house no 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 no, mm-hmm. no. we lying liar who lies okay this is fine uh so we're, we're gonna skip ahead a minute um to a question from the locals chat coupled with russell asking whether the covid19 vaccines alter your dna so the two questions were doc is there any hope nj Britt from our community asks for um reversing the effects of the mrna vaccine and do they really change your DNA or is it just a conspiracy theory? Those are the two questions. Yeah, so so for the first question, I think, you know, I it's so, you know, can you think of a time in history where so many people have been regretful of putting something in their body? I mean, it's 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 really profound. Oh. And, you know, and and I I honestly I feel terrible for for folks who have have put this in their in their bodies. The short answer is I don't know. You hear there's a doctor here, for example, Dr. Peter McCullough, and he has some ideas about what people can do to counter some of the effects of the of the vaccine. It's a it's a I think it's a it's a difficult thing. I mean, it's a there are other conversations um, that I've had with people about uh, spiritual approaches to undo some of the energetic effects of the vaccine since it was conceived in a just in a, in a, in a, it was conceived in a, in a frequency that you would not want to put in your body. So that's what I would say about that. And then in terms of this DNA issue, so, you know, we've raised this concern that there is contaminating DNA, which normally is not a big deal necessarily, but the problem is that with the MRNA COVID-19 vaccines, they have this thing called lipid nanoparticles that transport mRNA and almost certainly DNA into people's cells, which is a, just, that's just a completely new risk that has not been accounted for with these vaccines, but it's something that the FDA specifically has discussed in terms of the risk that DNA can pose to human DNA like in our cells. So it hasn't been proven yet. I've seen some mm. work that suggests that it is happening. It mm-hmm. hasn't been proven yet. I'll tell you that intuitively, I actually do think that it happens to some degree. I think that I think that ultimately that's what we're going to find. <laughs> just because honestly, this uh, these vaccines are just you know products from hell. Um, so I I, oh. I actually do suspect that that's what we're going to probably find. And um, and it's and it's, it's just unfortunate, in my opinion that, you know, so many people who were trying to do the right thing or trying to help their neighbor have had their good intentions completely taken advantage of. That's just just another horrific product of the last few years. 
Oh, huh. oh my God. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> we started on <clears throat> vibes. Let's party. Okay. <laughs> Um, so that all sounds very scary. Uh, lipid nanoparticles in the vaccine from hell transporting foreign DNA all around our bodies. Um, so I'm going to quote Paul Offit, uh, the director of the Vaccine Education Center at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, who serves on an FDA advisory committee for the COVID vaccines on this issue. Quote, you have a better chance of becoming Spider-Man than being harmed by DNA from COVID vaccines. Unquote. Okay, we're off to a good start. Uh, and I'm going to read from a Scientific American article featuring an interview with Dr. Offit on this issue. Uh, so the way mRNA vaccines are made does result in small amounts of DNA in the final product, Offit says. Uh, but that's true of any vaccine grown in cells, including the measles and chickenpox vaccines. There are tr trace quantities of DNA, uh, so billionths to trillionths of a gram per vaccine dose, which is utterly and completely harmless for several reasons, he says. Uh, to make an mRNA vaccine against COVID, scientists start with circular pieces of DNA called plasmids that contain a gene for the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes the disease. The plasmids are amplified into billions of copies inside of bacteria, and chemicals are then added to release them from the bacteria. Enzymes are used to cut the plasmids into linear pieces of DNA that encode the spike protein, and a different enzyme converts that DNA into mRNA. Another enzyme is then added to chop any remaining DNA into tiny, harmless fragments. In order to enter human cell nuclei, any such residual viral DNA would first have to enter the cell's main compartment, or cytoplasm, which normally keeps foreign DNA out. Next, it would have to cross the nuclear membrane. This would be impossible without an access signal, which these fragments don't have, off it notes. Uh, the residual DNA would also have to integrate into the nuclear DNA, which would require DNA cutting enzymes that are not present in the mRNA vaccine. The chances that that the mRNA vaccination would in any way affect your DNA are zero, off it says. Alrighty, now that the science is out the way, um, I want to get back to Ladapo saying that the COVID-19 vaccines were conceived at an energy frequency you wouldn't want to put in your body, oh my God. and suggesting there oh are spiritual God. remedies to counteract the issue. I mean, when I say this guy's a quack, I, I really do mean it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Message yeah. received loud yeah. and clear on that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh wow. Okay. All right. Um, okay. If, if anything, I want to know more. I want to know much, much more about this energy frequency issue he's describing. And thankfully, Russell shares my curiosity on the issue. I also want to ask you, Doctor, about at the beginning there, you said that there are potentially spiritual and energetic types of healing that you might endorse or consider when it comes to people that have concerns about vaccine injury or even perhaps subtler effects. And I mean, difficult to diagnose and cor corroborate effects of having been vaccinated. I have a friend that I work with, Dr. Jerome Poubel, who is a very brilliant chiropractor and healer. And he spoke for a long time <laughs> at the very early phases of the pandemic of potential threats and risks of the um, therapies that we're currently discussing or the injections. I don't know what to call them anymore. And, and like, I feel that I don't hear many medical professionals talk in terms of energetic healing no or frequencies <laughs> that's true but many of us know that there's more to healing than that which can be directly physically observed we are after all in the human body dealing with an entity that has an inbuilt tendency inclination and program to heal itself under many conditions sometimes spontaneously and surprisingly in spite of your <laughs> position as a sanctioned political Some physician, you still remain open to the idea that there is much about healing that we don't understand. Can you help me to understand what you mean by that a little more, please? Yeah, sure. Well, you're, I mean, that's, that's absolutely the case that there, you know, there's so much more. Ooh, um, so I, I've got to say, we Russell don't understand right. it, but apparently you do. You're a mm -hmm. magic boy. Tell me your magic, magic, magic person. Yes. Great. Great, Give great, me the great, magic, great. magic, man. Yeah, you're special. Um, 
You're special and different. Yeah, so Clearly, you know where no one else does. Let's make the best of these gaps in information. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Russell is right. You don't hear many medical professionals talk in terms of energetic healing or frequencies. Mm. I wonder why that is. Uh, mm. <laughs> also, okay. side note, Russell named his chiropractor in Oxfordshire just then, and I couldn't help myself but take a look at the website of Dr. Jerome Poupel, um, in which he describes a few things that took my eye, but one of them is called biophoton physics. Here's, here's what I learned, right? So, biophotons are no ordinary light. Each cell in our body emits light. This light is highly structured, coherent, and communicates with the neighboring cells inside the body and organisms outside the body. It carries unlimited amounts of information bidirectionally, informing other cells and organisms and carrying their information back to its own origin in the DNA. Every cell in our body is at any time informed about the state of every other cell. Healthy cells emit coherent light. Unhealthy cells and tissues emit non-coherent light, or none at all. Coherent light is polarized. The plane of polarization is the sagittal plane. Imagine <laughs> billions of parallel planes of glass emanating from the frontal plane of the body in an upright fashion. The biophoton waves would run along each plane. When a cell loses its coherence, so the ability to create, send, or receive coherent light, the physical tissue involved becomes dysfunctional or ill. Thankfully, this chiropractor has a solution, and what it is is putting stuff near your body to find the incoherent cells, as he says, and then fixing it by chiropracting it or pointing some light at it. Good stuff. Mm -mm. And this man charges... 280 pounds per hour uh, speaking of that uh <laughs> yeah. i was a sick kid in 1997 mm. so and not getting a lot of help and it does it hasn't really changed uh <laughs> uh unfortunately but yeah i was sick in 1997 so a lot of my like money that probably could have paid for my college went mm. to one specific huckster ass chiropractor that's what's crazy it's like i've well there's a few chiropractors in the mix um to to my mom's defense uh mm. we didn't really have any and she's still kind of not like i tried to get her a, uh like one of those photo frames for christmas she's like we don't have wi-fi at the house i was like oh right okay uh yeah to give you a perspective oh, okay. that was this past okay. christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is this past christmas yeah. not yeah. a lot of interneting being done um hmm. in 1997 i think it was i don't even know if we had it yet uh in her defense and that's mm. where it stops because this is batshit and i've heard mm. all of this guano so many times it's mm -hmm. fucking shocking it's still happening and like um you know i've talked about like didn't get to finish college i couldn't afford it couldn't do it mm. um and uh, this is a big reason why is this shit right yeah. here? Chiropractors thinking that they know stuff and just really just just making just winging it. Just wing because that was mm -hmm. winging it. That was a yeah. winging it story about light. That was a yeah. fantasy. Yeah. Oh it's God. um it's a fun story for what must be what, three hundred and fifty dollars an hour in America, something uh, like that. It's it's insane amounts of money. The supplements um, are the crazy part. That shit's fucking yes. that's that's yeah. that's that's at least especially at the time at least they also yeah, tasted I, I horrible um, <laughs> they didn't do anything and they were gross so that's cool i couldn't find anything on poopel's website about that but then again they are treated differently here we do have more regulations etc <laughs> yeah. so so there is that um anyway we're gonna hear what the, re <laughs> uh, the the rest of what ladipo has to say about energy healing and it goes to a dark spot from ladipo's past so content warning here for sexual assault on a minor um skip ahead a couple of minutes if that's an issue you're particularly particularly sensitive to. Uh, so here we go. And, you know, and, and when I'm talking about it, certainly, you know, I went to medical school um, in this country. I went to Harvard. I did a you know, residency training in this country, and I've been a practicing physician for many years. And I love science. I, I spent extra years in school but because <laughs> of I love science. But um, I talk about it in the book more. And I personally have had a my own journey that relates to 
um, a lot of trauma that I had as a as a child. I actually had was sexually molested by a babysitter, and it I thought it didn't affect me, but in fact it profoundly affected me. And I didn't find out how much it affected me. It didn't really become conscious to it until I fell in love with my wife. You know, I don't know, uh, eighteen years ago or so, and that process of, of falling in love with her really brought my problems, my problems in terms of the effects that that, that trauma and other stressors it had on my on my soul and my being, you know, that that soul that lives in all of us and and is the thing that that connects us to God and and makes each and every one of us special in our own special way. You know, mine, I, my, I had a lot, you know, really profound problems. So, firstly, I think it's important to acknowledge and applaud Ladipo's bravery in talking about this. Um, it's difficult for men and AMAP people to discuss being the victims of sexual assault, in, including from when they were children, and it's especially uncommon to see it in the machismo right-wing circles, um, because some of the shitheads in that direction would see it as a, an admission of weakness, rather than accepting and openly discussing things that happened to a person that they had no control over. Um, in Ladipo's specific case, uh, he discusses in the book being four years old and in, and in Nigeria when this occurred, uh, which is where he's from. Um, however, where I do take issue with this is where the energy healing side comes in. Um, it's not coincidental that he's mentioning this right after discussing the merits of energy healing, and it's because Ladipo claims to have been healed of his trauma by energy healing. Mm. Uh, to quote mm -mm. from his book, uh, we continued with a combination of Mao Jing, uh, bodywork that involved isometric, concentric, and eccentric contractions, and body of light exercises to strip away layers of stress and tension, uh, later citing how miraculous it was. Um, so this ties in with Russell's chiropractor, Jerome Poupon, who on his website also lists the five healing levels. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff there about biophysical stress, energetic perturbances, radionics imbalances, and disturbed microbiomes. But beyond that are levels three to five. So level three is unresolved emotional and mental traumata and conflicts from the personal biography. Level four is unresolved ancestral traumata and conflicts, curses and thought field influences, carryover of traumata and conflicts from ancestral issues non-resolved. So curses, cool. Uh, level five is guiding and correcting influences from the source um, that may be perceived as illness or accident. Okay. Perceived um, as illness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, I'm, I'm going to get into the claims made uh, by um, by Ladipo in the book in just a second um, because he he delves into some more specifics. Um, but in terms of in terms of Poupel, like I may be a cynic here, but what what the, what that sounds like to me is a charlatan with no basis of evidence to support his work, preying on those who are struggling emotionally and mentally and claiming to be able to cure them when what they actually need to be doing is going to therapy. Mm -hmm. like, holy shit! The lengths these men will go to to avoid going to therapy like they would Boy. rather pay 280 yeah. pounds per hour for someone to wave lights at them than go to therapy okay now here's the thing I, I, mm. I, I don't disagree that a spa day to manage the stress that you're under or mm. the anxiety that you feel especially like mm -hmm. therapy you know like re-traumatizing it can be re-traumatizing to relive these experiences taking sure. a spa day to help out your feelings and do some self-care completely valid now let's Absolutely. call it a spa day and not medicine because those are two very yep. different things yes yes they are yes they are um, wow so, that's dangerous no. also your uh -huh. wife isn't a free therapist just so you know that's listen also that. i have been in a relationship like i've been in relationships before that you know like and i'm definitely in one now where like there's a lot of healing that happens because you feel validated and you have like you know you have mm. someone to talk to absolutely yes mm-hmm <sighs> That is entirely possible. That's not mm. the whole pie. Like you can't just spa days and and and, and expecting a serious free emotional labor out of your wife are not mm. the solutions. Yeah, the the expectation on women to fix the men they're with is um is pretty from both incredible. Sides. Uh, from both sides. Yeah, from yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That yep. has not it's, changed. It's, a lick. it's remarkable. Um so 
and and uh, I, I will say, yeah, L- Ladapo talks a lot about his wife in the book, and and um, yeah, I bet he does. Doesn't... She's also mm, yeah. his therapist. I can't imagine what other roles that she's <laughs> filling for free. Mm. Yeah, um, religious and medical, it would seem from the book. Um, anyway, n- next up, Ladapo speaks of his own actual experiences with the energy healing. And the journey that my wife and I took, and my wife fortunately is gifted with just natural healing, talent Mm. and and gifts from God, directed me eventually to work with a guy named Christopher Maher. He's a former Navy SEAL. He lives out in in Southern California and he's had his own journey. And I I worked with him and he has a lot of uh, training and insights in things like Chinese meridian Chinese medicine theory and meridians and other healing modalities. And I worked with him uh, for five days. And I'll tell you that I would have, um, at the end of the five days, I came in very skeptical. I, I came in because my wife told me that I had to see him. And, and so I went to see him. And, um, and I'll tell you that at the end of our five days working together, I would, without a drop of hesitation, have traded every money, every dollar I had, everything I owned, I would have traded the the clothes on my back, everything to, to have the experience that I ended up having with him. That's how valuable it was. It was a you know, completely new lease on life or experience of life. And, um, and we did things during that week that, that I did not believe were even a thing or possible, but absolutely. And it relates to frequencies. It relates to meridians. It relates to energy. It relates even it to ancestral Specifically tell effects, me what it is. ancestral trauma. Um, and it relates to our DNA and how our DNA stores and our tissues store this information, the information of stress, the information of ancestral trauma, the information of our own trauma and how that affects affects absolutely how we show up in the world so yes there's way more to healing than than the um than you know the wonderful things that we've learned in western medicine you know thank goodness for for what we can do for people but there's so much more to healing Mm -hmm. a lot of that i agree with right again this is like there's a lot of that i agree with and then the things that i disagree with i disagree so vociferously that i can barely contain it wow okay all right Okay. Yeah, so he named the practitioner, um, and once again, that means I can look him up. Spa. Um, mm, so, <laughs> mm-hmm. do we have another Jerome Poupel? So, uh, well, when I look at the systems part of this guy's website, this this Christopher Maher, Ma, um, at truebodyintelligence.com, uh, the first thing that comes up is bioenergetic self-transformational sequences, or BESTs. Um, It didn't really further explain on the website, so I had to watch a video of the guy explaining it in a podcast interview, and he describes it as isometric, eccentric, and uh, concentric contractions with one for every organ and every muscle, and that's supposed to relieve stress. So basically, it's micro-exercises in in different positions, and I would assume stretches. Um, that, That seems to be that segment of it. Perfectly fine and good for you, but... I wouldn't say it's an alternative to go into therapy. Um, incidentally, as an aside, the next 10 suggested videos were from Andrew Hubberman, um, if that's any indication of what we're looking at. Oh, Andrew Huberman, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, great. yeah, yeah. Good, to cool. That, that guy. Nice. Yeah. Uh, next on the page was Body of Light Work, um, which, which Ladipo said he engaged in. Um, quote, a verbal energetic transmutation process that allows the body, brain, and nervous system to locate, transmute, and discharge negative generational stress, tension, and distortion-inducing patterns that are held within the conscious mind, unconscious breath, and subconscious body. This process allows the brain and nervous system to recognize and establish new positive patterns of feeling, sensing, emoting, breathing, and perceiving. Sounds sounds pretty pretty drastic. I I, I couldn't find him describing the actual process of it anywhere, um, unfortunately. I'm curious about him saying that it's a verbal thing, however, that that I'm 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 wondering if that's a clue. Well it's um, how you practice therapy without any training. And then usually <laughs> yeah, just cause more problems. Also, uh, oh yeah, no, <laughs> man. 
<laughs> well, yeah. see, the, here's the thing. He was a Navy SEAL, so he wasn't gay. That's, uh, <laughs> it's not gay well, we therapy from a Navy SEAL. Boy, Absolutely. oh boy. I, Absolutely. you know, I'm also, I can't speak to, I mean, I, I can speak to adjacent kind of like generational trauma um, as, as we understand it. And yeah, that's a real thing, like genetically kind of like genetic predisposition to um, like generational trauma. That's real. The thing is, is like the way that every wellness douche has just descended on that understanding and, and that kind of research, like just a pack of dogs is incredible and just ca yeah. it's so cavalier in yeah. taking this person's real pain and making it into something that, like it, it j just kicking the can down the road. Also, he said that his wife was like, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did she ask um, for therapy yeah, first and, and then she finally found something that you would go to because it's like no yeah, homo maybe, he's maybe. a like navy seal yeah yeah maybe. no homo spawn navy um, seal Tight. Um, yeah and with, with the with the generational trauma thing there's there's also the question like yes it exists but does it exist in the way they say it exists you know <laughs> is, right. is their description of it accurate and well, usually saying, not like, is energy um, healing the prescription for like that that was conceived of no it's mm -hmm. like it's it's uh systemic change and reparations it's like that's the thing that we should be doing to fix yep. it justice um, is what we should be doing to fix it absolutely uh right. the last thing i want to touch on is ma Jing, the thing that ladipo erroneously yes, called in, in in his book which which is quote a touch-based system akin to barefoot shiatsu massage and uses Chinese meridian theory to identify patterns of weakness, stress, tension, and distortion. Ma Xing disperses stress from the nervous system, tension from the structural tissues, blockages from the meridians, and toxicity from the cells. Uh, this system increases tissue health and structural health while leaving you with an over, over sense of lightness, serenity, interconnectedness, and increased well-being, unquote. So it's, it's massage with energy bells on um Spa. all well and good yeah mm -hmm. perfectly fine but not not medicine and not a replacement for going to therapy uh so definitely not are. no mm. can work in tandem very well sure absolutely very well I, yeah high massages are great always recommend um Honestly, when I started this interview, I did not think this is where we would be going with the Surgeon General of Florida. Like, anti-vax and COVID stuff I expected, but this stuff kind of took me by surprise a little bit. <laughs> oh, dear. You're right. Oh, God. Thank you for bringing it back there. I totally yeah. forgot already. I was just like, oh, this yeah. is just some guy that had a spa day. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, if right. Only. <laughs> like is taking like uh, is is the is florida surgeon general who is taking some institution for a fucking ride <laughs> with a lot of money in his pocket <laughs> yes. oh man all right yeah okay. yeah so we're gonna move on for a moment to russell uh discussing the topic of excess deaths um, Doctor, one of the areas that's been subject to a good deal of scrutiny, debate, and it seems censure is the topic of excess deaths. Here in our country, in the UK, the Office for Statistics, as recently as six months ago, changed the way that they calculate excess deaths. And the result of the change in this calculation was to bring excess deaths in the UK during the pandemic period, or at least I think late in 2022, down from an excess number of 30,000 down to 10,000. So whatever it is they did to the way they calculate, they said that you know it needed updating. The result was it appeared like there were less excess deaths. That's not the first time I've heard that the subject of excess deaths is being um, controlled, censored, uh, that people are trying to mitigate what we understand and know about this topic. And one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that I heard came to me via Dr. Pierre Corey, with whom I'm sure you're familiar, yeah. who pointed out that it was insurance companies reevaluating the way they established their premiums that revealed people were dying younger than would be anticipated and they just had to charge more for life insurance. That's an undeniable metric. Okay. <laughs> so, 
he is correct, right, that the method of calculating excess deaths in the UK has changed, and it has gone from 30,000 to about 10,000, but he doesn't specify why that's occurred. And also, that was 10,000 excess deaths for last year specifically, not an, an, you know, an, an average kind of not thing. Not cumulative. Uh, no, 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 no. Well, that's uh, nothing interesting. To, <laughs> nothing to do with the pandemic times. Now, Statistics are a tricky business, um, but one of the key factors here is is we're dealing with excess deaths, which means you know unexpected deaths that are outside the frame of standard mortality and aging. Um, and so the the kind of system you use to calculate that is really important. What the expected amount should be, and there's been an ongoing discussion around the old formula that was used, specifically because it wasn't taking into account the aging and growing population of the UK. Um, all else being equal, more people means more deaths, particularly if a greater share of the population are elderly. Nor did it reflect recent trends in population mortality rates, which were generally falling until 2011 before leveling off until the onset of the pandemic. In comes the new system. Um, according to the ONS website, quote, the chosen methodology uses statistical models to obtain the expected number of deaths in each period. Importantly, this approach moves away from averages drawn from raw numbers over a set period of time and instead uses age-specific mortality rates. This means when we ask that first question, how many deaths would we expect there to be, we take into account how the population has grown and aged over time. The models also account for trends and seasonality in population mortality rates and allow for estimates of excess deaths to be broken down by age group, sex, and constituent countries of the UK and English region. Uh, this approach provides a method for routine monitoring of excess deaths on an ongoing basis. Um, so it's something that, that they don't have to revise every couple of years like they were the last time because... because what they would do was kind of take a data set over, say, five years and use that um, and try and kind of average it out, whereas now they can be much more consistent. Mm -hmm. um, in case you're curious how this changes the picture of the pandemic period, um, estimates on an annual basis indicate 76,412 excess deaths in the UK in 2020, um, compared with on the old uh, metric, it would have been 84,064. Well, that's not um, that different. The... It's hmm. not, is it? Hmm. Um, but, you know, the, the number of excess deaths last year was shaved down by two thirds. Um, so it does seem we were using a very faulty system that has now been seemingly corrected for the most part. Um, of course, what Russell is claiming is that it's in fact a cover up to hide the number of people getting killed by the vaccine, um, which is completely unfounded. And he provides zero evidence to back up those claims. Um, and it's all coming out of stemming out of profit for, for the insurance companies, um, which, again, not as much of a thing over here. We are talking about UK statistics here that are, that are, uh, yeah. that are an issue. Yeah, that always gives mm. me pause. And But the thing is, mm -hmm. it's like I have to give I have to give myself pause like, oh, right. Like, what does it even yeah. mean? Like, what do we... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Pri private private health insurance over here is very rare. Um, it does exist, but it's very rare. Right. Ah, <sighs> dear. Um, so... From here, Russell asks um, asks the question to Ladipo, who then goes uh, on a little, uh, little bit of an anti-vax jag. I wonder what you feel in particular about excess deaths, both in your country and uh, across the world, and whether or not we will ever have co a concrete indicator or evidence, I suppose, that there's a connection between the medications of the last few years and this strange new data. Yeah, that's a great, great point, Russell. It is, uh, it is very hard to prove with the, the scientific methods, the statistical methods that we have currently that the, the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines have contributed or to quantify that. It is very hard to prove. Mm, and, is, you know, and, and part of the reason it's hard to prove yeah. uh, is sort is also reflects the tragedy of how the, uh, the vaccines were tested. You know, it, with a randomized clinical trial, which we had early on in the pandemic, and they were, you know, they were reasonably well designed, at least for COVID, not so much for what they were ultimately marketed for, which is hospitalization and death from COVID. They were not designed to evaluate that. They were really just designed to evaluate symptomatic COVID. 
we had an opportunity to to really compare the groups and people should be very clear that during the randomized part of the trial where you can look at these things without bias and compare things like overall survival between people who received the placebo and people who received the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, there was no overall benefit in terms of overall life. And in fact, in the vaccine group in the Pfizer trial, believe it or not, more people died. It, more people died in the vaccine arm overall than in the than in the placebo arm. The difference wasn't statistically significant, and you know it's just a shame that the trials were so short and that they weren't even larger in terms of the number of people that were enrolled. And that would have given us a sense. Mm, okay, so so f for start, his premise is okay. This this initial study was fine. All the other ones are bad, but this one is okay because I want to use this one. Okay, fine. Um, essentially, what we have here is some reheated bullshit from 2021. Um, the claim is that because 14 people in Pfizer's placebo group died and 15 people in the vaccinated group also died, um, for Pfizer's data shows um, its, its COVID-19 vaccine does not reduce the risk of dying from the disease, which is nonsense. And in, in Ladapo's estimation, the vaccine could even be more harmful because an extra person died in that group. Um, the reality is, of course, that this is bullshit. Um, those figures reflect deaths from all causes during Pfizer's ongoing study of its vaccine. Uh -huh. uh, the vast majority of the deaths were unrelated to COVID-19. Only two people in the placebo group died of COVID-19, and one one person in the vaccinated group died of COVID-19 pneumonia, um, according to additional Pfizer data obtained by the Associated Press. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of the deaths were due to other factors, including heart disease and heart attacks. Um, it would be concerning if the study showed a significant increase in deaths from a specific cause in the vaccinated group, as that would signal a possible adverse vaccine effect. Instead, the data showed the vaccinated deaths were distributed among a number of causes between both groups. Um, no deaths were considered to uh, were considered by the investigators to be related to the vaccine or the placebo. Um, Pfizer's data shows that the vaccine is highly effective at preventing serious illness illness from COVID-19 and data from countries that have used the vaccine widely shows it is also effective at preventing death from COVID-19. Because of course it is. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, of course, none of that is going to stop chuckleheads like Russell asserting it's the vaccine causing heart attacks and blah blah blah, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, but what can we do? Um, this is so fucking yeah. frustrating. It's so, I, just yeah. the fact that this yeah. song and dance is still happening. And they they're yeah. they're capitalizing on it. It's just outrageous. Jesus. Christ. Yeah, I mean, this is information from three years ago at this point. Like, good God, get some new talking points, you know? Um, yeah. Anyway. Is our listeners bored? Like, is is <laughs> like are the follow like are you? I mean, I guess not because it's still hitting their haha. I was right all along button in their brain. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's there's definitely a degree of that. Um, confirmation bias situation, isn't there? Um, anyway, Ladapo has more to say on this issue, and he takes it in what could be described as a fun direction. My sense from evaluating everything that we've that we've seen, all the evidence during the trial, I mean, the fact that these things very clearly eventually cause you these mRNA boosters eventually cause you to have an increased risk of con contracting COVID. I mean, it seems it's so obvious and, and CDC and FDA pretend like these data aren't out there, but it's very clearly the case. It's multiple studies from multiple countries find the same thing with the boosters. My sense is that, you know, in fact, I would, I would, I would, you know, I would, I would make a, a very confident bet that they have totally contributed to what is factual, as you said, from from health insurance actuarial re, re, uh, reports uh, with life insurance, that they've contributed to to excess deaths. Certainly, the lockdowns also contributed. There's just no doubt that was just a terribly inhumane what? policy, and what? many people have died as a result. But How? my sense is that these mRNA <laughs> COVID nineteen vaccines have also contributed to the excess deaths. Um, so what he just said was, my sense is that the vaccines have contributed to the excess deaths. Great. Um, yeah, real quick on the, on the lockdowns point, like, 
the reason Florida's COVID death death rate is so high is because he lifted the lockdown. The lockdown mm -hmm. would have saved lives, and instead he just let everyone wander around doing whatever the fuck they wanted in the summer of 2020. Accordingly, the months of June, July, and August 2020, uh, the number of COVID-19 cases in Florida increased over 11-fold, from 56,830 on June 1st to 631,040 on September 1st. Um, and the seven-day rolling average of COVID-19 deaths increased nearly fourfold, from an average of 29.7 um, on June 1st to 113 deaths per day on September 1st. Um, just, just that few month period took Florida COVID deaths from 2,500 to 15,000, um, and hundreds of thousands of people infected who, who, for all I know, do now have lasting effects from that. Um, and this man has Now we don't stones. know, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. folks be out here <laughs> getting COVID five to seven, like three to five times. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. It's, if, if it's individuals or cases, that's even its own uh that's its own statistical anomaly that's yeah that would be its own fun little thing wouldn't it yeah um, and not just in my experience but that's something that like our listeners have responded to whenever i you know especially tell the story about these like lovely people in roswell that were yes, like yeah i've yes. had it like f three or times now four i don't know like whoa okay, Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh boy yeah. yeah what what a complicated yeah. what a complicated problem and they're only oh, making it worse yeah, and uh, yeah, this guy has the stones to call himself a doctor. Um, as for the COVID vaccines making it more likely for you to catch COVID, um, mm, it was found by the, the British Medical Journal that after the second Pfizer vaccine, likelihood of getting infected with COVID-19 was increasing over time, suggesting that the vaccine was helping prevent contraction of COVID-19 to start with and then tapering off after a few months um you know and so so it's it's not it's it almost increases. like it's an impermanent <laughs> solution much like yeah. flu vaccines that we have to get every year and if it's not we at least immunocompromised and elderly people have to get every yeah. year not yeah. every vaccine is permanent not every disease is fucking chicken pox this is okay yeah, and it's it's not that it was that that getting the vaccine increases your chance of getting it. It, it was that um, that that your your chance increases over time compared to when you first get the vaccine, um, and that's that's you know for for the contraction of the thing. And this this is also from twenty twenty one. This study, by the way, and the re the researchers do acknowledge that the interpretation of their findings is limited by the observational design and they cannot rule out the possibility that other unmeasured factors such as household size, population density, or virus strain may have had an effect. Um, nonetheless, uh, the recommendation was for booster shots, which is exactly what happened. And even then, the vaccine was never designed to prevent contraction. Um, at no point did it stop doing its job were you to actually get COVID? You are still protected by it. It's just odds of contraction, you know, in increase compared to what they were when you first got it. It's very, oh, it's very, it's very frustrating. Oh, well, uh, and getting vaccinated could potentially make you more cavalier in disregarding, uh, either in your disregarding of, um, of other health and safety measures, or honestly, sure. and much more likely, yeah. is that our governments, our, our governing bodies fucking gave up and said, vaccine, job done. This is all we can do. We're not going to keep mm. enforcing these these measures. Like, this is a really complex issue that is fucking super obvious to me on its face yeah. if you just think about a, a, how a human behaves in a day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'm crazy. I agree. I agree, but the economy, Lauren. What about the economy? Oh yeah, uh, no, great plan. It went awesome. It went, it mm -hmm. went great. Everybody's winning. Mm. This is this mm -hmm. is killer. Psyched. Good. So a lot of posts started. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna let him finish. And it's so hard to prove. But what we should be doing, and fortunately, I, you know, we have a governor. I've got you know, and a friend, Governor Ron DeSantis, who's really. I mean, his 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 courage meter is like off the charts. He's he. <laughs> Yeah, he's willing to do whatever it it takes. He truly is. I mean, literally, it's like it, that's that's who he is. 
Mm. We, here in Florida, we're working on doing some autopsy stuff. What you need, because you don't have the clinical trials anymore, is you need studies where just you learn more about the pathological effects of these vaccines, studies that show abnormalities that are consistent with vaccine mRNA associated death. And I think if you have enough of that, then it becomes harder to deny that overall, these are these are harmful products. I mean, they yeah, early on, did they protect older people, very vulnerable people from dying from COVID-19? Yeah, that, I think the evidence was pretty good for that. But overall in the general population and now on booster number you know, 12 or whatever number we're at, are they harming okay, people? Okay, drama. <laughs> I, my sense is yes. And again, you just, you need the autopsy studies. You need that type of pathological evidence just to show that these are, these are very harmful products. Oh, Surgeon General of Florida, everybody saying, do we have proof or not? These are harmful, harmful products that are harming everyone. Well, his sense is that they're harmful. He's do saying proof that or they're not? harmful. Okay. Are we, do we have proof or not? <laughs> Do, why do I have to keep listening to this person? Do we? He said it. Very hard to prove and very hard to even to sense and understand. Uh, but then is going to say that yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say I do believe him that Ron DeSantis will do whatever it takes. That that Courage is a word to use. Uh, Courage is not a word not to my use. choice. Wouldn't have been my choice, but it's a, it's our word. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, thankfully, in the in the next clip, um, Ladapo does actually make a more specific reference that I was able to hunt down. From the beginning, there was a sense that this evidence is, if perhaps the word manipulated is a contentious term. That's but, true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, no, that, that's true. That's true. There's some there are issues, right? There's a there's you know you don't count the first two weeks or so after the vaccine, so it, there there are definitely ways that the clinical trials are for stacked reason. against the, uh, against the you know sort of weighted to make the vaccines look better. But I, I mean I, I don't want to you know Dr. I'm doing it right who, now. Um, I admire a vaccine researcher <laughs> closer to you than me. She's I think in Denmark, and one of the things she's shown and others have shown with their research is that it is completely totally possible to have a vaccine that protects against a certain disease, but still causes a higher risk of overall death because the immune system is, is magnificent. And unfortunately, it's almost impossible to tinker with one thing. So in this case, protection against COVID-19 and not affect myriad other parts of the system that affect our whole bodies. So just that even if they, you know, they help with severe illness from COVID-19, just like having prior infection does, you know, that's, that's, that's fine. That's no big deal. But what's the overall effect of the, of the vaccine and the whole overall effect of these ones is horrific. And, and like the news is not getting better. It's going to keep getting worse. But you oh. said you don't know. You just said you don't know and can't prove it. He okay. did say that. Um, and, th and that's why he referenced um, someone called Christine Stable Bell. Stable Bell? Um, that's the name he uh, he mentioned there to back up his claims. Um, she's a physician in uh, Denmark. Um, it's a name I wouldn't expect anyone to be particularly familiar with, uh, though she did in 2019 do a TEDx talk espousing the virtues of the polio vaccine and how data indicates that vaccines do much more than protect against the target disease. They also have so-called non-specific effects, and in most cases they come with an added bonus of increased resistance against other infections than the target disease, Makes suggesting sense. that if we if we take that into account, we can save hundreds of thousands of lives every year just by making the existing vaccines smarter okay great and then she argues that we should properly examine the effects of vaccines on overall health now that argument can go in a bunch of different directions but since the pandemic she has been an ardent COVID-19 vaccine skeptic, um, claiming to be, I know, claiming to be vaccine curious, as she puts it, and all the while listing off all the reasons she thinks the COVID-19 vaccine is bad and harming people. Um, her work makes a lot of unfounded claims, particularly that the COVID-19 vaccine is killing people and killing children. Um, she also promotes the idea of natural immunity lovely stuff um but she she makes it sound fancy using scientific words so that makes it true 
Uh, Ladapo is, of course, wrong here, um, in case that wasn't obvious, but he's doing a very good job of using his position in the most irresponsible way possible to make money. So that's good. Does she reconcile her kind of position with the polio vaccine versus this one? Like, is, is there Not any really. kind of... She just is done i mean yeah. i love i i i can't wait for the day when i stop seeing um the ted talks that grifters do i love that yeah. day ted yeah sir do the work you need uh -huh. to a really successful yeah. blog does not a correct person make <laughs> that's really no. it's something no it's something no it does it it does not. It does not. And I think, you know, were, were you to watch that TED talk, you, you'd you maybe kind of like it. You know, you, you'd be like, oh, yeah, the, these are reasonable points this person is making. Let let me follow her on Twitter. And, and then you start to get fed all this other stuff. And if you if you don't approach it with a uh, with a skeptical eye, then maybe you'll start to fall down that ra that rabbit hole. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, Russell has a question about personal media attacks. Oh, you are subject, I think, to some pretty personal media attacks, uh, vilified and ridiculed. Were you surprised by the level of coordination and ability and appetite to dismiss your free speech as well as your professional <laughs> expertise uh, when it came to this subject, Doctor? It's unbelievable, right? I was I was totally surprised. I mean, just most recently, we had some measles cases in South Florida. And, you know, and they were, you know, the, the, the lockdowners were hungry for us to lock the kids out of school who didn't have a history of prior measles and, or a vaccine. And I and I said, no, you know, let the parents decide. I mean, first of all, they're treating measles like it's the plague. It's, it's a serious illness. But it also used to be a pretty routine illness that you know, uh -huh. most healthy people had no problems with. And what? parents get to make those decisions about the type of risk that they take on with their with their families. And the media just I mean, it was unbelievable. I honest to gosh. Uh, and then, of course, they were completely wrong. Everything was fine. Uh, and they don't write corrections. You know, they don't they don't, mm. they don't update the readers about how their their predictions that the sky was going to fall and, you know, and the state was going to descend into some hellish pit didn't come to fruition. You know, they're they're done. Right. They do their damage. They they uh, they dust off their hands and they're on to the next next little area where they're going to do some more damage. So it's been a surprise to me, even sometimes, even this late in the game, how both vicious and irresponsible and manipulative they can be. <laughs> but, um, you know, thanks to guys like you, I think more and more people are, I know more and more people are becoming aware of how it's not, they're increasingly, they're not a tool for information. They're an, a tool for manipulation. And it's like, that's gross. You know, most people don't want to participate in that. Ugh, pot kettle. Um... <laughs> Yeah, Russell certainly makes so, me more aware of the manipulation of this information. So Yeah, yeah, you know what? That that is true. <laughs> That's um, wild. Wild. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to I'm going to read from a Washington Post article on this point. Um, so in in uh, Broward County, Florida, six students at a single elementary school recently became infected with measles. Um, two more cases of the highly infectious virus have been reported in the county. Yet instead of following the well-established public health playbook to curb the outbreak, Florida Surgeon General Joseph A. Ladapo has done the unthinkable, telling parents they could defy health guidance and continue sending unvaccinated kids exposed to measles to school. To understand just how outrageous this is, consider some facts. First, measles is a terrible disease. This is universally understood in the medical community. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that as many as 1 in 20 children with measles progress to pneumonia. 1 in 10 children develop ear infections, which can result in permanent hearing loss. About 1 in 1,000 will have the infection spread to their brain, which can lead to swelling, seizures, and irreversible neurological damage. And uh, for every 1,000 kids who contract measles, up to 3 will die from it. 
Uh, there is also a rare but terrifying neurological disease that could occur years after someone recovers from measles, in which individuals go through months of personality changes and depression, followed by blindness, dementia, and uncontrollable jerking and writhing. This okay. condition progressively damages the brain, eventually affecting the parts that control breathing and blood pressure and causing coma and death. Second... Measles is one of the most contagious diseases in the world, much more transmissible than COVID-19, for instance. The measles virus is airborne and can live for up to two hours after an infected person leaves the area. If exposed, an unvaccinated person has a nearly 90% chance of contracting it. The reason Americans have not feared this virus for decades is, of course, vaccination. Uh -huh. Two doses of the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, the MMR vaccine, are 97% effective at presenting measles. One dose is about 93% effective, and if given during an outbreak to an exposed person who is not yet vaccinated, it can substantially reduce the chance of that individual contracting the virus and then passing it on to others. Ladipo and DeSantis are playing with children's lives, uh, particularly in a state with so many irresponsible parents unwilling to vaccinate their children. It's insane. Here's here's my lab. Here's my here's my Wuhan lab wet market theory. Okay, mm, are mm -hmm. they trying to make a a COVID measles? Are they trying to make a measles COVID? Because that, that's the only thing that I could I could glean from the information that's, that's to, been presented to thus far. Them, right? Yeah, I'm not coming mm -hmm. from science. I'm coming from again vibes, and maybe that yeah. vibrationally that we could make like a, 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 a an even more like incredibly contagious COVID. Because that's the other thing that people fucking don't take into account with vaccination with you know with the swiss cheese method of preventing disease is it does not you're stopping the j disease from mutating so every mm. single time that person that you that you had to work with or you know listener that's like well i've gotten covid three or four times now they've aided and abetted the cooking up of a new and more sophisticated covid in that process mm -hmm. so that the cavalier nature of like I mean, uh, uh, are you, yeah, trying to make super measles? Trying to make yeah, super yeah. COVID? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What other yeah. intention could there be? I mean, it really, like, well, there, genuinely, too, reason, like, these kids like, are having a hard time because of the lockdown and not going to school. Sure, you're not dealing with that either. This yeah, isn't fixing no. anything. No, I mean, and and as it is, you know, it's for, it's for 21 days. Like, okay, sure, it sucks, but suck it up, you know? Um and yeah, there, there's a reason that you you have strains in America that don't exist in the UK, and and you know there's there's a there's a reason for that. Um, yeah, it's called a petri mm. dish. Mm -hmm. It's called a fucking petri dish. I I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was growing horns whenever they got COVID in a year. I don't know. It's crazy to <laughs> yeah. me. It's absolutely yeah. nuts. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand that like the whole logic. But oh, okay. All right. It's, it's it's our freedom. It's our rights is what it is. Um, it's child abuse. Uh -huh. uh, also that. Uh, next, we have a troubling suggestion from Russell and his locals chat. A few more comments. Jim Earth, 137 said, this guy would destroy Fauci in a debate. Would love to see it. And NJ <laughs> Britt in our community asked, if Trump is elected, sure. would you be interested in the Surgeon General's position if it were offered? And I'd like to add to that. Would you, the, uh, and I don't know if this is, is something that's encompassed within that role, but would you be advocating for a kind of money out of health position, an FDA that wasn't funded to the tune of 70%, I think, of its revenue by the companies that it's supposed to be regulating? Would Do we need to get lobbying out of po politics? Do we need to control the way that big pharma companies are able to fund legacy media and the obvious financial ties and leverage that 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 gives them what are the kind of changes given that you've just offered the diagnosis that the problem is that avarice is what motivates the medical profession what policies could be introduced in this um in the event that you uh, found yourself in a a, a, a a again a vaulted position at the national and federal level would you what kind of policies would you and changes would you advocate for dr ladipo 
Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I, I definitely want to have as much influence as possible uh, oh. with these issues because, oh. um, you know, because I, I, I feel I feel obligated to. I mean, I, I feel very strongly that um, that I'm correct in terms of the things that um, that I um, say and feel. And and so, you know, I, I think I'd be open to exploring anything, any any way of, of achieving that. I do not love that answer. I want as much influence as possible, yes. Like, can you imagine this man as Surgeon General of the United States? Good Lord. No I can't imagine him as Surgeon General of Florida. I can't I even know. imagine that still. I keep forgetting. Like, it's, it's and just... Yet. <laughs> Also, no vaccines guess for what? anyone, and we, we, we're going to do vibrational yeah. healing, all right? We can kill the disease with light, everybody. Don't worry. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I, you know what? I could destroy anybody in a debate. Uh, give me any debate, and I'll destroy somebody if I can just lie. Like, yeah. I, if I can just lie, especially, he has a very calm demeanor, which mm. I think. I'm not going to speculate. It's a calm demeanor. And mm. especially if you can lie calmly, guess mm. how, like you can, you can appear like I'm not doing anything wrong. You're the one doing something wrong. I don't, and you mm -hmm. even like stonewalling, it, like all of these like very calm tactics can win a debate regardless of who's right. Cause you're eventually going to drive somebody fucking nuts. Like that's, that's it. It's it's the argument. Oh, look at you getting all emotional and invested in the topic while I remain serene and and swan like. Yeah, because you are comfortable with lying. You are comfortable <laughs> with making shit up, which is why you can yeah. be calm, cool, and collected. And you also you don't you don't want to be correct. You want to win. That's yeah, what the debate yeah. is about. That's a problem. It's, it's um, it's it's the same as when people make like you know devil's advocate arguments um to 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 things that they have no stake in, and and they're like, well, why are you getting so upset? It's like, well, because this actually affects me. You fuck. Like that's why I'm getting upset. You're making a devil's advocate argument, you know, for for something that actually affects me, and and it matters to me. Yeah, the the, the idea. No, if that, someone um, makes the devil's advocate argument. And then you're saying, no, this is how it actually affects me. And then they're like, oh, well, that changes my perspective because I've heard a personal anecdote that maybe rings true and I'll uh. re-examine my position. That's what that's supposed to like that, that or like mm. a devil's advocate argument. And then someone's like, well, it happened to me. And they're like, well, what do you mean? And they're like, okay, you, you could, the thing is, is like, you can compromise on information. You can compromise if you're, if you're like, that's what actual like conflict resolution and open-mindedness looks like mm. is listening Hard and understanding that <laughs> yeah that blows yeah, my sounds... fucking gourd dude this is yeah. a lot i mean yeah. uh, also vibrational frequency that fucking noise so do you eat meat yeah. do you, how how are the vibes for like exploited workers in the fields that make all that like pick all your food like what mm. how are the vibes in an industrial slaughterhouse or a meat pa uh, well, the meat packing factories where covid was ripping through in america and the bosses mm. and the managers were had like an actual deadpool were betting on who was going to get sick that happened mm. yeah. that's uh, so if we're worried about what is put in our bodies and regretting the things that are put in our bodies, food, mm. your food maybe, that you eat every maybe day. Maybe think about it. Oh, and that never Oh, my God, and that never mm. 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 Oh, How about the clothes um, on your back and the, like, rampant exploitation? Oh, my God. Oh. Yep. Uh, so Does it not, not scale? Okay. Yeah. You're... you're <laughs> What do you know? That that's okay. the the that that's different. I I know that's uh you know there's money involved in that one, but that's different. That's different somehow. Uh, now on to the changes Ladapo's uh, saying that he would make were he Surgeon General. Ooh. And you know it's interesting. I know because I was the answer I actually is going to come from policy. The answer doesn't come from policy uh, because. It's it's just it's this it's a common dynamic as as you know Russell that when you know when you change the goalpost or you make something nearer or you push people this way those things will change what people do but when the folks who are involved like when they care about something different than your objective 
they're going to be, they'll constantly and forever be looking for little holes, little ways to get around those new goalposts and those oh, yeah. new, you know, those new barriers. Yeah, know and they will do that it speaks from experience. Know, for it, eternity, right? And eventually they'll be successful. I mean, that they, 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 that stuff doesn't, it doesn't work as well as, as well as you want. So where the change <laughs> policy doesn't work is where it's happening right now. Loopholes exist. So people. policy doesn't work. When you change mm-hmm. the vibration of the people, <laughs> like when you change our, you know, our orientation to ourselves and to the truth and to information and to our goals and what we want in our lives, these, these systems that are only about profit and not about health, they will not survive. Like one way or the other, they will fall. Every last one of them will fall. How? And that type of change is sustainable and can last forever and will direct itself as the circumstances of the world change to meet whatever the needs are at that time. So what I would do would be to focus on the people and access to the type of 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 programs, of interventions, of technology that can help people raise their vibration, shed stress, shed trauma, connect with God, connect with their connection with the universe, connect with themselves, right? Because it's all oneness. It's all connected. And that's what I would do. That's where I would focus. And it's it's achievable. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly pretty speechless. Like, what do you even say to that? If you get everyone on the correct vibrational path to oneness, all the medical systems will fall away, and this is sustainable forever, and it's achievable, and it will change to whatever challenges meet it. And now, that's... we talked about this. Yeah. Mm. Like we, we talked about this with, like, New Age like new age spiritualism thinking that we all just need to meditate and get on the same level as my guru and that's it's a it's a thought stopping um seriously problematic way to view the world and has gotten mm. us where we are right now because it's still happening i cannot believe this person is in charge of uh, anything it's incredible i mean change doesn't come from policy then why are you a surgeon general if if it doesn't come from policy what then you should be hosting retreats with your Navy SEAL friend. The, yeah. How do we t- – like, okay, so if it's not policy, then how do you how, – how, tell me how from your position of authority in the government, not that your that vibrations need to change. What are, what are your directives? Like, seriously, write on a piece of paper, sir. Tell me what you are doing – to use your power and position, not mm. good vibe talking, but like, okay, so policy, again, then why are you, you can just be like a popular person on the internet or TV, I guess. Why is a person that doesn't believe in policy in the highest authority for health policy in a state that this good conversation question. should impeach him from his position that's fucking wild to me yeah like mm-hmm. what do you say what do you what what logic can be applied to this like to these again it's very it's all vibes and okay I would, um, I, I would like to know what what he would suggest doing to raise everyone's vibration that's exactly level. what I, i'm I, saying I, make I, a list yeah yeah what's exactly. the steps i, I want and and would you have to lay that out in maybe a policy um, that people would have to follow? Is that what you would have to do to make that happen? Hmm. 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 Is it? So yeah. Many are we talking vibology? <laughs> Is it vibology? You already have a theme oh. song. Like there you mm. go. Like truly, Paul Abdul's got you. Wow. You even there's wow. a campaign right there. Your vibology. Tell me, and the what man is it? Wants to be Surgeon General to the United States. Um, okay. Is Surgeon General to Florida? To Florida. I know. I know. How? That well, is damning how, enough. Wow. Wow. That's damning. That's Just... out fucking rageous. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway. That is the last that we're going to hear from Ladipo. Uh, but Russell tacked an editorial onto this interview that I do want to take a little brief look at as um, something of a of a bonus, as a palate cleanser. So let's let's hear him, him introduce the editorial. 
Now, as you know, the legacy media will always amplify the messages of the powerful. They will keep you compliant. In a sense, we're all victims of MK Ultra now, which, by the way, if you're an Awakened Wonder, you'll get a special video on, only available to our Awakened Wonder community, because all of Don't our consciousness is me. being managed no. and manipulated. <laughs> Here on this channel, we give you the truth. Remember, you can get one month free by using the code God is Great. Become an Awakened Wonder right now. Now, to present the news to God you in a way great. you'll never see. In the mainstream media. Here's the news. No. Here's All the, the time. Oh. Thank you for the music box. Here's the fucking news. No, here's the fucking news. White clots are mysteriously turning up in people's arteries and bodies discovered by physicians and morticians. With the amount of censorship that surrounds the issue of COVID, are we ever likely to get the truth about white clots? Yeah. Mmm. Okay. White clocks. All right, pause. It sounds fun. Pa pa mm. Pause with the serious stuff. I just looked at my, uh, I just realized I look like Janice from the Muppets making this face right now. And I just needed to say it because it was, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> with the, the hat combo. <laughs> Monica, you did it. Uh, you made me go full Muppet. Okay. Happy All days. Right. Um, well, this is the one so, we get. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. White clots. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any any awareness of white clots of what this no. is, where this is going? No, blood I didn't clots? have one either. White cells. Well, we'll, white we'll, blood we'll, cells. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, and, hmm. and and also also God is great. That's his code. That's his that's his discount code for for locals All the time. at the moment. God is great. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, the uh, the white clots thing is actually a pretty simple matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him continue down this path a little bit before I explain what's actually going on. Um, and so in the next clip, we have one of my least favorite people and one of your least favorite people in conversation with each other on GB News. Um, and warning to those watching for some pretty gross imagery that will be flashing up on the screen. Let's have a look first of all, a conversation between Dr. John Campbell and the brilliant Neil Oliver so that we can understand what these white clots are. Ugh. I just don't like thinking about it. I don't like thinking about a vein being all clotted up with that stuff. Have you looked at them yet? They're really bloody disgusting. Then we'll look at John Campbell talking to an expert on the subject and then we'll look at some medical data and medical analysis so that we can understand whether this is something we have to continue to be concerned about and why we're not discussing it more plainly and broadly. It really is like something out of a low-grade novel, Neil, isn't it? You've got this new or apparently complete completely new pathology being found in dead bodies around the world. And we know that these have been found, these strange, mysterious, long, rubbery white clots that have been found in bodies in the United Kingdom, the United States, oh. Canada, uh, New Zealand, Australia. Delicious, cod slow, lovely, bacon ride, mm, lovely. Now, I have actually heard about Thanks, these Russell. some time ago, but I didn't realise how abundant they were. And then I was interviewing Major Tom Haviland, who is a data analyst in the States, and he's actually reached out to 269 embalmers with an average of 15 years' experience each, uh, embalming about 100 bodies a year on average per person. And in the year 2023... 73% uh, of these embalmers have observed these strange, white, stringy, rubbery clots. Really quite incredible. And if you take into account the embalmers that didn't see any, it was still in 20% of the dead bodies. And it seems to be pretty similar in the United States and in the United Kingdom. Mm, that sounds scary, doesn't it? Unprecedented they look like tendons. New white clots. Yeah, like just for those they that are listening, bit. they look like tendons. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and and they're appearing in autopsies around the world. I I wonder where John Campbell could be going with this. Um, yeah, for 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 those listening, what's also flashing up on the screen is the headline: "Are we facing a new disease? New autopsy findings suggest we might." Good old GB News with their responsible reporting. Um, notable that uh, Nurse John Campbell, who I really really dislike, is on Neil Oliver's show. Um, who even when sat in a television studio is still wearing a scuff man is all about the aesthetic um <laughs> i kind of i kind of respect it in a way um yeah, Brandon, all right yeah. let's mm -hmm. yeah let, let's have one more clip where russell reads from a source before i i explain what's actually happening that can be an inch long or can be up to 30 inches long are there and have been pulled out of the arterial systems and the venous systems of dead bodies and there's some anecdotal reports of them being pulled out of living bodies by surgeons as well but we know for sure in in about 20 percent of dead bodies and these didn't occur prior 
to 2020. OK, so that's the introduction. Before we get into Dr. John's conversation with a well-informed expert on the subject, let's read you a little text. In a world gripped by the relentless march of a pandemic, the discovery of white clots in the deceased has ignited a firestorm of controversy, drawing attention from healthcare professionals, conspiracy theorists and concerned public alike. I'm all of those, except I'm not a healthcare professional. At the heart of this debate lies a critical question. Is there a link between these unusual clots and mRNA COVID-19 vaccines? When Thai neurologist Dr. Thiravat, referencing the insights of English YouTuber and retired nurse educator Campbell, took to Facebook to discuss the presence of white clots in the carotid arteries of the deceased, the online community took notice. Particularly concerning was Thiravat's suggestion that these clots found in individuals with a history of mRNA COVID vaccinations might be connected to sudden deaths. I can't see that it would be good to have a 30 inch rubbery white blood clot in your arterial system. I can't imagine that it would be advantageous and it does seem extraordinary that excess deaths are widely being underreported and mismanaged mathematically by offices of statisticians. That heart disease appears to have significantly risen, that certain types of cancer appear to have risen, that these medications were patented in an unusual way, at an unusual usual time that the lab leak itself is potentially a result of dual purpose research. There are too many intersecting factors for there now to be an odd HG Wells arterial triffid like story to emerge without it being cause for concern. Just how? Even if it's a lie, tell me why you think it's happening. I don't care about Uh, your flowery bullshit, dog. Oh, jeez. Okay. (sighs) He um, he can't because the answer is question mark. Um, but but either way, it's the it's the COVID nineteen vaccine. Yeah, for it's the COVID nineteen vaccines causing this. But of course, um, so what's actually happening, right? So firstly, I'd like to address the source that Russell was using just there, yeah. um, which is a site called BNN Breaking, not to be confused with BNN Bloomberg. BNN Breaking is a news aggregator in Hong Kong owned by Indian-American entrepreneur Gurbaksh Chahal, um, who is also a serial domestic abuser who has attempted to murder at least one of his exes. Um, so <laughs> stellar guy. He's, he's, wow. He was also later, later honored by Donald Trump, so that's good. Um, the site itself is known for publishing fake news, spreading misinformation, and AI generating its content. Uh, these people are so bad, they have been de-indexed from Google so that you can can't find the site through there. Uh, that Thai doctor that Russell mentioned has appeared on television saying that prior to the invention of the vaccines, this has never been observed before, referring to the white clots. Um, this, of course, backs up John Campbell's hard insinuation that the COVID-19 vaccines are causing white clots in living people and killing them. Thailand's National Vaccine Institute issued a statement on February 21st uh, clarifying that the white clots seen in the images are not related to mRNA vaccines. Um, Quote, The images in the claim uh, do not show a blood disorder caused by mRNA vaccination whatsoever. It is only an aggregation of fibrin, key protein component of bloods that occur after death. It's a post-mortem blood clot. Um, It is a natural phenomenon commonly found in the bodies of the deceased. It has also been observed since before the COVID outbreak and the use of the COVID-19 vaccines. Unquote. Um, Dr. Atasit Dal... Amnue, I'm going to say, Dol Amnue, yeah. Um, a forensic pathologist at Buhimbol Adjul Adjul Hospital. Um, apologies, uh, everyone. Uh, also concurred that the white clots are natural and are commonly found in deceased bodies. Quote, I always find such clots when I perform an autopsy. It is not related to mRNA vaccines, unquote. Um, similarly, Tani Taniyavan, a pulmonologist and medical instructor at Brigham and Women's Hospital um, at Harvard Medical School, describes the clot's appearance featured on the false post as similar to typical post-mortem blood clots. Uh, quote, its appearance is exactly like a post-mortem blood clot. It doesn't have a rough surface like anti-mortem blood clots, so I have doubts about the claim, unquote. Um, yeah, Tani added that the presence of white blood clots in dead bodies could come from a number of causes, including obesity, diabetes, cigarette smoking, or even from a COVID-19 infection. Um, so basically, 
this is a thing that has always happened, um, has always been found in dead bodies, and these ding-dongs are acting like it's a new phenomenon in order to spread their anti-vax nonsense and make some cash. Uh, yeah. Russell spends a full 20 minutes on this, uh, when it could be debunked in pretty much less than a paragraph. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> and, and that was Dr. Joseph Ladipo as well. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, All mm. right. Um... <laughs> So maybe, well, it's, it, the thing I, I'm, I'm like, I, what's ringing in my head is like the, mm. um, the alien implant phenomenon of like, mm. but that's, that's like of people thinking like, oh, I had this thing under my skin and now it's not, and, and, and we take it out and, oh, it's a foreign body and it's this and it's that. It's like, and then no matter how many doctors say like, no, that's a normal thing to have just like weird lumps sometimes because human bodies mm -hmm. are weird and like pretty yeah. gross. Yeah. Uh, and so, I guess. but yeah. these are post-mortem. So there's mm -hmm. no one getting these things extracted and then being, ga you know, aghast that there's like a, a like a, a, a lump of, of adipose tissue that get, that's a weird shape. Correct. Yeah, out. yeah. No, these 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 are all from autopsies, which is why what John Campbell was citing was was morticians. Um, you know who who are who are finding these. It's like, well, yes, they always find these. They always have found these. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's um, it's not uncommon. Um, and and yet he is a collection of people all trying to repackage this as something brand new that is caused by COVID nineteen vaccines. I'm like this. I mean, I I, I applaud the um the collective effort, if nothing else. You know. <laughs> you know, I also you know what if 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 autopsies were the um were the subject, I don't think I'd mm. go to a retired nurse and a history presenter. A subpar history presenter yeah Those again we come back be... to that 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 idea of uh, examining who you're getting the information from that ladipo said at the start yeah yeah i'm with you i don't know about nur like nurses that do autopsies that's not okay not not a not a thing not a thing yeah um, if you're which, helping with um, autopsies you have a different job title that's like a different mm, job yeah but also which, i mean yeah. This is might, so might explain why why John Campbell doesn't know anything about it, but then also he is a liar and knows that he's lying um, because he makes a lot of money out of it. And oh, good lord, a fucking I hate that waste guy. of our time. Tight. Pretty Sick. much. Pretty okay. much. Yeah, yeah. I um I listened to the full twenty minutes of that, and then I was like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like, oh, it's just all completely wrong. It's, okay. It's all just, it's all just okay. oh, this is just a normal thing. Oh, okay, fine. Fine. Yeah, the body oh, does dear. a bunch of crazy shit when it dies. Human bodies are weird. Human yeah. Are weird things. Really complicated. Mm. You can make mm -hmm. a lot of hay out of the weird stuff that happens. To and we and we do. Hello, true mm. crime. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. There's a lot of hay to be made that's entirely reasonable and interesting. Absolutely. <sighs> Okay. Absolutely. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I get the feeling that's also not the last we'll be seeing of uh, of Joseph Ladipo, but um, we shall see. We shall see. There's a, yeah, there's a little bit of like preacher instinct that um, having a really, like a legitimately really traumatic kind of uh, compounding factors in your life in mm. your in your personal story and what you said talking about his personal journey like he's not mm. writing a medical text mm -mm. is what transforming fear is the word is the transcend fear yeah transcending fe transcend mm. fear mm -hmm. that doesn't sound super medical to me like <laughs> no he, he gets into some of the medical stuff towards the end but mostly it serves as a as a kind of memoir kind of time thing the portion of of personal like experience and and this isn't just preachers like it's communicating in general it's just that's where my mm -hmm. mind went to but like having that like it makes you kind of unassailable because you're also saying like oh are you saying that my trauma isn't important or my trauma is not valid which like even just saying like bringing up like I'm not comfortable, sir, with how you were talking about trauma, saying that in like the fact that he's a black person, it, it already complicates that, like that choice mm. and that like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm going to couch it. It's not my fucking place to say necessarily mm. 
Like I'm mm. going to make, you know, I'm just, I, I can't be concrete about it and I don't want to. Um, but this is, but like exposing the kind of problematic nature of his overall point, like that's, it's something that's going to really drive that home, you know, like mm. as, as drive his point home because he's he he has packaged it with this kind of like emotional like impervious emotional bubble mm. that he it makes it that much more complicated because again like both of them said like evil from satan you know like oh from hell mm -hmm. like right mm -hmm. so again what we talked about last week is like oh well if you say it's evil then you there's no argument against it you don't yeah, have to explain why um, you don't say you're you're not saying it's wrong you're saying it's evil that's the end of that that's the end he's, of that he's discussion. Described, uh, he's described the COVID-19 vaccines as the Antichrist before as well. So that's good. Oh, great. Mm. Well, that's not even the, what the book says or even any make em ups <laughs> Still a person, not a vaccine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, uh, I mean, hey, it's, any... it's effective. So, you know. Anything uh, is possible. I guess this guy's... Uh -huh. Um, so hey, we'll see if uh we'll 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 see if he gets his job as the Surgeon General of the United States. <laughs> what a world we live in. What a fantastic world we live in. All New right. fear unlocked. Tight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tight. Um if anyone wants to support us in what we do, head to patreon.com slash. I have plugs, by the way. Oh, should we do okay, let's do some plugs yeah. up top. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Um let's do that. Or up bottom. Okay. Uh, that's because we're at the end. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we are going to be in, um, we being me and Mike are going to be in Houston this weekend, this Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be at the St. Arnold Brew Brewery at, um, it came from the Bayou. It's a really, really cool annual um, print show and event market thing. And it was so fun last year. Um, Mike's been going for a long time. Um, you know, some of our like, print uncles and print dads kind of th really throw down and make a cool event and nice. uh today i will be putting some hustle in my bustle to get as much stuff done as i possibly can and i have no ideas that are like really cool and y'all have to wait to see them mm -hmm. um next week probably uh unless i sell them all in which case snooze you lose but um yeah and you can um Find me on my Instagram um, for more information. And mm -hmm. but yeah, if you're in the area, come by, say hi, say yeah, a hug. So, so that's Houston, right? Yes. Awesome. Houston, awesome. Texas. 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 Cool. Very, very cool. That sounds. Um, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, I. I don't, it'll be. I don't it's stressful know. now. I want to die. Well, yeah, so stress stressful. Right now. Stressful right now. Um, but it'll but, be fun uh, very soon. <laughs> yeah, I imagine the the event will be great fun. I don't have any plugs, so I will also say everyone go to that. That that sounds great. Um, I would be there if I could. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to support us, what we do, head to patreoncom slash brand. We'd be very, very happy to have you. Um, if you want to get in touch, drop us an email. It's theonbrandpod at gmail.com. Um, say hi. Uh, if you would like to join a group of uh, like-minded Awakened Wonders like like us, uh, there's a Facebook group, On Brand Awakening Wonders. Um, and, uh, you know, there's fun discussions happening in there. There are also great discussions happening over on the Reddit, where our uh, our beloved mod, Monica, who makes the hats, um, um, lives. Multi-talented. Uh, Oh, hello. Indeed. Um, so go over there if you prefer more more anonymous browsing. There have been some really fun discussions there um, about country music as well that, that I mean to weigh in on shortly. Um, and on socials, we're the On Brand Pod in most places except for where we're not. Look for the logo. Um, and personal socials, I'm at Elworth Official and Lauren is at may.by.lauren.b. Um, and also click the link in the description to get a magnet. Oh! There it is, we surrounded by actual gold, we sell actual gold. real life gold leaf that is on that magnet. Um, so hey, do that and check out the rest of Lawrence shop while you're there. All right, everybody, uh, patrons, we'll see you Sunday for some off-brand goodness, um, and the rest of you will see you next week for another main show. Uh, we love you very much. Thank you for sticking with us. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. That's not win-win-win. That's lie-lie-lie-lie-lie-lie-lie. That's propaganda-propaganda.